Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on all types of topics related to narcissism. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos. I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up. It's a free way you can help me out. And definitely don't forget to leave a comment because I like to read what you have to say. So today is a special day. I always love the days when we do this. And that is when what we do is I have my daughter Paris on the channel. So Paris, welcome back to the channel. Hi, everybody. So Paris has agreed to be with us here for today's video. And why don't we start, Paris, by you telling us a little bit about what's going on with you since you're last on the channel. Um, so I guess we're, first of all, like Christmas is a couple days away, so I'm obviously excited about that. We're doing like a family Christmas this year. We're having Joe's um, brother and um, sister-in-law and their kids come over, so I'm excited about that. And then also going off of that, a little update, I guess, on me is I am starting college in January, which I'm excited about because I'm kind of taking a gap year this year. I graduated in May, but I'm going to be taking like three classes starting in January at a community college. And my second book is going to be coming out in February, so that is coming up as well, February 24th. Can't tell you guys the title yet, um, just because we're trying not to release our last name until afterwards, so more information later, but the second book in the trilogy that I first started publishing in August is coming out soon. And I guess I'm also going to be getting a new job in January. The store I'm working at is closing down, so we're kind of in our like last, like I think, four weeks before we close, so I gotta find a new job now, so there's a lot going on since you guys last seen me. Paris is very busy, and you know, I had mentioned on one of the times she had come on previously that in honor of Paris's first book being released, I was going to give away 10 copies. I wasn't sure how I was going to do that. I'll figure that out, and it's because of what Paris said. The only reason I haven't done it is because I'm not officially divorced yet, and I'm not even... I would say officially, I'm not, you know, there's no divorce yet. So I try to be careful about releasing our last name for safety purposes. So once the divorce is final, I'll be giving away now, not just, and you know, it's so sad because when your book came out in August, I was thinking that it would not be too long, like a month or two before I'd be doing this. Now it's heading into the second full year of the divorce, but that's all right. We're getting there. So yes, Paris is releasing a book so proud of her Joe's so proud of her and I will be giving away 10 copies of the first book and the second book so oh, the second book yes, too. it's gonna cost me a lot of money Paris doesn't give me them for free you know <laughs> so Paris is here today because I thought that well actually yesterday today is Tuesday but the video is gonna be released on Wednesday yesterday I released I put something on the community page it was a little questionnaire and I got, uh, thank you so much if you replied to it. We got so many comments and Paris and I and Joe were talking about it. And there's, we're, a, we're somewhat, our thoughts are up in the air. So we thought that we would talk a little bit about that in today's video. So please go ahead and leave your comments in the video because I really want to know what you have to say. So I'm going to just tell you what it is so that you're up to speed if you didn't read the community page. My ex has not had contact with my children. He gave them a two-year silent treatment. He ended the silent treatment once the divorce started going. And now he's allowed by the court. He has no other contact with them. He has no, he's been abusive and it's been a problem. The only thing he's allowed to do is send an email once a week. So now he sends a once a week email. But the children, my 16-year-old son and my 19-year-old daughter, have opted with, to do what I believe is actually the best Situ the best thing to do when you're given a silent treatment. Like so many people have been in the pain of a silent treatment. Personally, I learned this the hard way and this is advice for anybody who's in this situation. And I know this isn't easy. If someone gives you a silent treatment, they're telling you exactly how they feel about you. And the best course of action is to continue it permanently. Now my ex gave me a silent treatment. My longest one was seven months, his own children, two years. So they don't respond to his emails. We, he got, the kids got a package in the mail from him a few days ago, addressed to them, and just a small package, so I'll tell you what I think is in it, but I don't know because I haven't opened it. Small package, I imagine, is Christmas presents. Because the kids are no contact, we thought the best thing to do is to mail it back to him unopened. Or, you know, on the poll I did yesterday, that was one option. Throwing it away was another option. And opening it and not acknowledging it was another option. 
So originally, we really thought mailing it back that's a Paris dinner birthday is the best option. I told my son about this, and he wants to keep the gift and not acknowledge it. So we're going to talk a little bit about those choices today, and we'd love to hear what you have to say as well. So Paris, why don't you start, and why don't you talk about what you think the best thing to do? So originally, um, I, I thought the best course of action was going to be to just mail it back without opening it. We have guesses on what it is, it, but we're not going to open it and find out. We're just going to mail it back. Now, my brother, um, no, the reason actually why, um, why there's kind of a debate about this is because on my birthday, he sent me, a, my, my father sent me a present, I mailed it back, and he sent me an email in his like weekly email acknowledging that I sent it back. He was like, oh, I'm sorry you felt that way. I just ignored it. So we knew if we didn't mail it back right away that he was going to likely send an email. And so we told my brother about it so that he would know. Uh, my, yeah. hit my son, her brother, is, you know, this is a thing that Paris and I have noticed. And I don't know if this is just the way it is for us or other people. The men in the family, so that would be my son, Joe, his kids, they seem to take this a lot harder than Paris and I. We seem to have... I don't know if a better attitude is the right word, but this is painful for my son. So I try to keep him shielded as much as possible. I wasn't originally going to tell him that he got this package in the mail. My fear though, was that my ex would send him an email talking about the package. So I felt that I really needed to say something to him. I did want to protect him in that way, but I, I couldn't. So my son had a little different of opinion than Paris. So go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so so I, just, I just wanted to give the background on that. So he wants to take it and then not acknowledge it. So, I mean, honestly, my opinion though, is that if we do take it, like I know you've talked to me before, like not wanting to kind of stoop to his level. I don't, my personal view is like, well, kind of screw him. If I want to take the present and keep it, I'm not going to thank him for it. Like yeah. normally, like we're a thank you card family. I'm not doing that with him. So those are, those are our options. And I'm like, I'm torn on it. Like I, I think a part, good reason why I'm torn is partially because of my brother's view. Like, once the package is open, like, hey, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take whatever's in there. I'm not going to lie. I think, by the way, I said I was going to mention this before I forget, and you get to the end of the video and say, there's nothing in there. I believe, now I could be way off, but looking at the size of the package and knowing him, he probably got them a gift card and one other thing. He probably got my son, like, a Red Sox shirt, or who knows when he got you, Paris, maybe, like, a pink shirt or something like that. Yeah, so, so it's not going to be like this amazing wow thing. It's just going to be some little thing. And some people on the community page think that mailing it back actually breaks no contact. And I can see where that's coming from. So that's kind of my, that's where I'm getting really stuck. Like partially, like I said, it's my, my brother's point of view. And then like I, I can see where that's coming from, but also not. Like it's, there's no, it's not black and white. There's no like easy answer to this because on my birthday, like, he's like, oh, I'm sorry you felt that way. And I'm like, oh, I'm not sorry you feel that way. Like, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with that, man. Um, but part of me at the same time is like, I don't know, there's so many different ways. Like, I feel like I'm stumbling over myself. Some ways I'm like, well, I don't want any of his, like, filthy gift card, like, his money. But at the same time, I'm like, well, you know what? You've also screwed me over. So, like, yeah, I'm going to take whatever it is you gave me. Like, yeah, I'll take that. You kind of owe me, man. So it's mixed. It's so difficult, you know, and I, like Joe and I and Paris initially thought that the best course of action, like Paris said, was to mail it back unopened. And that was what I felt strongly about. But you guys kind of swayed us a little bit because when a couple of you said that it's breaking no contact, I can see that. And I, he mailed a priority mail, so I know he knows we have it. So he's not thinking that maybe it got lost in the mail. He'll know. For those of you that don't know, my ex has been on it just it's he's been so bad he was abusive to us he came to the house with a gun he scared us threatened us it was horrible the kids had ptsd I, every time we left our house i would see them looking around for him we lost our home he stole money from the kids this is not a decent person this is not somebody that my kids need to be in any type of relationship with after he gave it to your silent treatment to this day, he hasn't apologized to the children. He hasn't tried to make anything up. It's all about him. And like a typical narcissist, you guys know, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And he just goes on that way. He looks at me as, well, it must be your mother. Because I don't know why you wouldn't have an, want to have a relationship with me. That's the narcissist. 
the problem I have is, and this is where I need to be strong, um, swayed a little bit by my son. My son is 16 years old. This all started when he was 12, 13, really before that, but it gotten bad around that age. He's been really hurt by this person. And I know his attitude, and he told me, his attitude is, you know, screw him. He sends a gift, yeah, I'm, like Paris said, I, I'm gonna take it. The problem is, I, you know, I don't want to stoop to a level like that. You know, Paris said, we are a thank you card family. So I don't want, because dad's definitely breaking no contact. Mailing the gift back, I can kind of see that both ways. And then also somebody mentioned in the comments, so if this is you, thank you, that this is cognitive dissonance. It's like setting us up for that too. So if the kids take this gift, right? And then later in a couple of months, he does something else. Then they start thinking, oh, well, maybe he's not so bad. When the reality is that he's doing this deliberately. It, it, it's a game that a narcissist plays. And it's difficult when you're trying to be a good person. We're trying to move on. I'm trying to raise my kids right with manners and to be good, thoughtful people. But do we just take this gift, ignore him, and then just go on with our life? Because then I feel like he's the door's open and he's getting supply from that because he knows it came to the house. Yeah, see, but then... Also, it's like another option too. It's like he's getting supply from that. Whether we throw it out or not, people in the comments are also talking. about one of the options we gave was throwing it out, and then some people mentioned donating it. So, my, I don't really think, in my opinion, those are either the options because if we just toss it out, like that just kind of I don't something about like just tossing an unopened package in the trash can. I don't know why that bothers me. Like it seems like a waste. Like I I don't know how to describe it. And then with the donating thing is it's not going to be something that's really worth donating. Knowing my father, other people who have had experiences, maybe it's something great. Knowing him, it's really not something worth donating. So, but again, like maybe like, the thing is if we end up doing it, if we end up throwing it out, if we end up donating it, he might still think we took it. So he's still going to get supply no matter what way we look at. I think somebody commented that no matter what happens, whether we mail it back, whether we keep it, whether we donate it, throw it out, He's going to get some form of supply from this. He's kind of, there's not a way for us to be like completely cut him off in the situation, I don't think. You know, Joe and I have spoken about this privately at length. The thing that's difficult, and this is something that I know a lot of you parents have to deal with and understand, the kids need this person to just thing whatever. Somebody did that in the comments too. If that was you, I had such a laugh over that when you kept referring to him as it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It sent a package. But the thing is just seriously, he's caused massive damage to my family, massive damage. We're recovering now, we're doing okay. But this is a person that refuses, he refuses to even have a life insurance policy to benefit his children. The, you know, this is somebody that stole money from the kids and in the divorce proceedings, because he had a better lawyer than I did, in the divorce proceedings, I have to pay part of his debt that he hid behind my back. He doesn't, He he doesn't, he, oh, he also, he doesn't, he hasn't seen the children for years and he's insisting. And of course he got this. I'll tell you what, what I got. So he got this, he gets a tax refund for my son next year. I don't have, I, I was a stay at home mom for 20 years. I mean, I am a veterinarian, but I don't have my license so that I have to do a bunch of stuff to get that. If I want to do that, I'm also not as young as I used to be. Right now, Joe and I, we struggle. We struggle because both of us got our, 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 our narcissistic exes took everything. So my, my ex has a six-figure job. He won't even let me get the tax refund next year. He fought, he fought to not have, and this is guys, he fought to not have to pay any extra towards child support if he gets a raise. Now he's not gonna get a $100,000 raise. So it would probably be about $15 a week more in the child support. He's horrible. He has hurt these kids and he won't go quietly into the night. He just insists that he hasn't done anything wrong. And so he sends these gifts and then I have to deal with issues like this and then it hurts the kids as well. So it's just, it's, it's very, I can't stand it. It's horrible. You know, it seems like with a narcissist that they're, they're, you can never get rid of them. If you have kids with a narcissist, they just attach themselves to you. So Paris and I have been trying to go back and forth and figure out what the heck to do because I do kind of think that whatever we do, he gets supply. Even if we mail it back, I do think mailing it back would be the thing that would hurt him the most though. Just if I'm looking at it that way, keeping it, he knows it came to the house. I'm sure he's tracking it and he'll have that satisfaction. 
That's true. It would, like, so that is true, though. I do think, like, if we're going to, like, not get him back, like, you know, get our little revenge, but, like, that probably would be the best thing because we didn't, we didn't accept it. We didn't accept his present. So he just, and it's also if it's unopened, he knows we don't even know what it is. Whatever's in there, like, we just sent it back unopened. It's like there's, that kind of sh- really does show that we don't care. And that's what I did for my birthday, and I don't have any regrets for doing that. But, like, I can also, I can see how that kind of breaks no contact, and I don't want to, like, break no contact. That's my hesitation, but maybe it doesn't break no contact in some ways. Like, like it does, but it doesn't. Is I don't know how to it. Yeah. yeah I like, know what you're talking about. It's, I know. Like, this is a thing. I'm not trying to use this gift as any revenge towards my ex. I'm trying to do what is best for my family and what is, is, is best as we're moving forward. The children had an opportunity. They, it's up to them if they want to have a relationship with him. They've opted not to. I do support that because the damage that he's caused, I don't know how he can possibly think he can walk into their life. There's been no apology. It's only blaming me. In the divorce proceedings, what I went into this and what I wanted above everything was full custody of my son. I got that. So he got everything financial. He only gave me things that are required by the state that he couldn't get up, get out of, like 50% of the house. And, you know, and, and I'm angry about what happened too. He promised in the mediation in June. Now he actually hasn't signed any paperwork since June. Like he just doesn't sign it. I'm still married because he won't sign paperwork. He just pushes it off. So he said he was going to put our house on the market July 15th. I, it's finally on the market now at the worst time of year. I got a house in New Hampshire with snow everywhere. You know, it, it's not a good place. It's not a good time. The real estate agent told me if he had put the house on the market when he was supposed to, the house would have sold for probably $200,000 more than it's even putting, than it's even on sale for. That has hurt my family. That, you know, it's not like that I'm going out shopping and I'm buying a new car. I'm trying to take care of the kids that he deserted. It's very difficult. So when I get this gift, I, you know what? We just want him to go away. Like, we just want him to go away. And he just, he will not. And then these things happen. And I, see, Paris and I are also swayed by my son because Paris is such a good sister to her brother. She adores him. And I adore my son, and I don't like him being hurt. So when he wants to do this, I feel torn. Because as a parent, I feel like because he's a minor, I'm the one that makes this, the decision. I'm the one that has to do what is best for him, regardless of what he personally thinks. But he just, he's been so hurt. I really think he's looking at it. I know he's looking at it. Well, who cares? Why does he have to know? I'll just take it. If I want it, I'll, I'll have it. And I get that. I get that feeling. But then again... I don't, you know, Joe and I spoke about this, and Joe particularly is adamant that returning it is the best course of action. And that originally was what I thought as well, so to Paris. But I've just been swayed, partly because of what some of you wrote and also partly because, you know, I have obviously a soft spot for my son. But I don't want to be that type of parent where is the parent that isn't doing what's right for the child and instead is letting the kids decide things like that. This person has really, it's a miracle that we're doing as well as, as we are. And I, it's only because of God. We worked really hard to get to a better place. He did everything possible to, to destroy us. Yeah, he did. So it's, there's like that little bit of like this torn bit. And then also in the back of my mind, like, I don't want to seem like he's doing a favor because I don't really, I don't have any pity for my father. But like, you know what? He's taken everything from us. The least he can do is send us. I don't know. I don't I don't know what's in it. Maybe it's maybe it's something that I would just end up throwing in the trash. But it's like there is that side of me that's like, you know what? Like like how my brother's view is, you know, screw him. I'm going to take it. Like he's taken money out of my bank account. Like I I there's certain things I'm saving up for that I can't get because he's taken the money for it, like college, getting a car, things like that. You know what the least he can do is send me like I don't know, an Amazon gift card, a t-shirt. But I also don't want to accept it and have this like, oh, my father gave me this. Like, I also don't want that either. Yeah, it's very, it's very difficult, you know. So I, I don't know. Like, I'm, right now, I'm leaning towards returning it. I just, my son has been hurt so badly. But just because somebody might get hurt, when you, I, I still feel like, I, you know, I'm the only parent these children have. It's all up to me. And I, I want to do a good job. I want to raise them right. 
I don't want them to think, well, they can take stuff or not. And I want them to, to be, you know, the type of the, the type of people that have manners and, and aren't going to just, just because somebody was mean to you, be mean to them back. They've opted to just no contact. They don't want, he's, he's dead to us. But then this happens and my son who's been hurt wants to keep it. And I know, and this is another thing, and this is where the ex has a little win here. If I mail it back, which I'm leaning towards doing, suddenly he's going to know, uh, oh, not he's going to know, I'm going to know that my son's been hurt again. And this time it's for me because I had to step in and do what a responsible parent has to do. So there's that as well. And then we also are likely going to get that email acknowledgement, but we might get an email acknowledgement either way. And I know the emails, I don't know if my brother has him blocked. So it goes, I don't, my emails, they go straight to my trash. I don't know if it does for him. He told me that that's what he did, but I know, so, you know, if you, if you block somebody on, on your phone that you don't, they don't call you like they might, but you can't, you don't get a message from them. It doesn't ring. You don't know. With email, I thought that you could do the same thing, but what it does is instead it goes straight to trash. So I don't know if my son is doing this or not, but it wouldn't surprise me. He did block him, but Paris has blocked him as well, and she could still hear, see his emails because they go to the trash. So my son goes to delete trash. It's right there. I could, and then you see like the first line or two, so it, it's, not, it's not the way it is with the phone. That, you know, that does happen to me, though. If I go to empty my trash, which because I get... I've, get so many emails I'll periodically empty all my trash there's this little red handprint that pops up so I know that who it's from so I know what it says and I can see it there so whether we accept it or not I know there's going to be that email it doesn't affect me as it, I, I don't get super upset about it whether I see like oh I see you return the gift or I hope you like the gift like what, what, whatever circumstance it is it's not going to affect me as much but my brother sees it he will likely be upset about that because there's not really a way for him not to see it. See, yeah, that, that's a problem. And, you know, as a parent, I want to protect my children. The reality is that my kids have seen way more than they ever should have seen. They've had to deal with so much more than... I, it's, it's evil. It's evil what has happened. And then this, you know, this is like a minor thing, I know. But it just, I feel like it just pushes that knife in a little further. And it's, it's just a difficult thing. So there you go. There you have it. This is what we're trying to figure out. So let us know. What do you think we should do? What would you do if, if this was you, if this is your situation? So I hope, you know, I'll be back actually before the holiday, but I'm still, I need to get Joe to play his guitar. Do you think Joe's going to play his guitar, Paris, on the channel? I, I mean, I <laughs> want to say yes, but like, I feel like you're going to need to like convince him, like remind him about this. Joe's the type of person, right, where if I ask him to do something, yeah, 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 I'll do it. And then when it's time, oh, but this is wrong or that's wrong or I need time here. So I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to push him hard to play the guitar because he's really good and I think it would be great on the channel. So thank you, everybody. Paris, thank you so much for being here. And actually, I have our little doggies, too. So we have Fiona and Belle. They're here as well. It's kind of like a little ladies thing that we're doing. I'll see you guys on Friday. God bless.